Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and set up the UI where we're gonna display the blogs. So the first thing we're gonna need is to actually get the blogs from our API. And to do that, we're gonna need Axios. So let's go ahead and install that into our dev dependencies. Okay, so once that's done, let's go ahead and quickly check that it's here. And I can see it in my package.json file, so it's there. Uh, next thing I wanna do is go into my view app app.view and here is where I'm going to display my blog post okay so let's go ahead and create a wrapper that's made out of div and again I will just say main header which is going to be mega blog and for what I'm actually going to do I'm going to wrap it in another div and this is going to be sort of the container uh, in here I will create another div and this is where I want to display the initial blog posts to which I can navigate to individually. So uh, to store those blog posts, I will need a, um, I will need some state for this component. So I'm gonna create a data property and uh, this is going to be a function which is gonna return an object that's gonna store my blogs. And uh, when I create this component, when it once it's created, this is when I basically, I wanna call Axios and I want to call get and I remember my route so it's slash blog uh, nice and simple if I then call then uh, I'll, I can grab my result and I can then access my um, uh, blogs property and grab the data from the result and assign it to my blogs okay so now let's go ahead and iterate through this list so v4 and blog in blogs and uh, with the uh, iteratable objects we need to provide a key so view can uh, uh, cache them so view can cache them efficiently and all i'm going to do in here is i'm going to create a header if i want to style this further a little bit easier actually let's start with double curly brackets so blog dot title and the second one let's say div and div again and let's say body here okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give this a class of app so this is going to be my main app and this is going to have a class of card and uh, uh, i'll style these in a second let's actually go ahead and make sure that this runs first so let's say npm or rather dot net run okay cool so let's give this a refresh and there we go. We can see our mega blog and posts. Let's go ahead into our styles here and let's say, first of all, let's remove the margin on the body. So margin will be zero. Next thing I wanna do is grab my app and I wanna display flex. So I, I'm basically aiming to center this div container, okay? So display flex and justify content center so that is going to center that container and then i want to basically make it a little bit smaller so i don't want it to still end up on the left and uh, basically i want it to be a little bit closer to the center so i'm gonna grab this div and i'm gonna say uh, maximum width is 400 pixels and always occupy those 400 pixels if possible so that's how i'm gonna say 100% here. I'm going to save this. And uh, it looks like I forgot a loader. No biggie. Uh, let's stop our application. And uh, if I can navigate to my webpack config, in my rules here, I can specify a, another rule where I'm going to test for ending of CSS files. Uh, like so. Yep. And then I will need to, instead of using a loader, I will need to use multiple loaders. Uh, so I will have to specify a user array and the few, first loader that I will have to use is a view style loader and this is what is going to allow view to load the styles from the view template and then to actually load the styles that are extracted we're going to use the view the, sorry the CSS loader okay so let's save that make sure they're in this exact order order otherwise you're going to end up with errors I'm going to clear my console a little bit, and again, I'm just going to say .NET run. Okay, so let me close the Webpack config. Let me give this a refresh, and there we go. You can see it's 
it is offset a little bit let's see what's happening in the background so here you can see my div which has the width of uh, 400 and it will always be centered up until it gets to this point of being on a mobile screen right so um that is what i was trying to achieve next thing let's just close this console here and i want to just give these cards a little bit more pop all right and first of all let's just go to html and set the background color so it's not white so let's see what we got uh let's go with the azure that sounds amazing okay so and, and it looks amazing so now that that's that let's go ahead and create a card class and right off the bat i'm just going to call the box uh, shadow nothing can be done without it being 3d now so for x i'm going to specify zero so offsetting it on the x is zero offsetting it on the y is one pixel so i wanted to create an effect of the sun sort of shining from the top down and then i'm just going to give it a little blur and see how that looks uh, zero for like solid all around i'm going to give it zero so then let's go ahead and give this a shadowy color so if we're starting from black at zero zero i'll just say four 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 uh, so let's see what this looks so you can see it's on top of each other at the moment so let's go ahead and uh, fix that first so margin and i will say top and let's just say 0 0.5 rem uh, like that so you can see it's separating it's not standing out at the moment so let's go ahead and not padding but rather let's just uh, choose the background color so it's really standing out right so ooh, i can see biscuit biscuit killer okay so that looks pretty good to me uh, one thing is the text is a little bit too close to the wall here so i'm gonna go ahead and introduce padding now and let's say 0 0.5 rem and there we go so looking a lot better i'm going to be clicking on this so i'm gonna say card hover and cursor pointer okay so if i am hovering on these now they have uh, a cursor all is good so now let's go ahead and try to load a blog so i'm going to be selecting a blog uh, so i will need a property and i'm going to call it just select blog rather let's say selected blog and i will need a method to actually execute uh, a function that will load this blog so let's create methods uh, and load blog and i will need an identifier so that there that is i'm going to take axius and again i'm going to call get and for this i'm going to use es6 uh, string builder and uh, i just want to supply the id here and uh, let's call then and i want to go ahead and do very similar thing i did before i want to take the selected blog and i just want to assign the rest data to it all right so let's go ahead and make this blog selectable so First thing I want to do is wrap this iteratable um, iteratable elements in a div so I can perform a VF on it. Uh, it you you shouldn't be doing VFs. I, I'm not. I don't think you can even can do that. So if I type VF here, uh, you can see it's underlined. So even if I say true, it's going to be underlined because this is an iteratable object. So imagine having like ten objects and VF is proccing we'd rather just do it the in the container and then the for loop isn't even executed. So uh, let's do v if and selected blog. If it is not null, we want to display the list. And otherwise, let's display the blog. All right, so v else, uh, I'm going to just give this class uh, post and I'm going to copy the div and the header here. And uh, I'm going to, rename the blog to selected blog here so i'm selecting the correct attributes uh, once that's done i actually want to style the post as well but i'm just going to copy it from the card here so post and include dot at the start let's see this work so uh, something is going wrong uh, actually uh, i didn't create a i didn't basically i'm not calling an event i'm not calling the method so on click once i click on this element I want to call load blog and I'm passing in the blog ID like that. 
So let's click on that. And there we can see first blog. I want to actually be able to exit this. So uh, I can place a back button here, but it's going to be part of this post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div. I'm going to wrap this again. And I'm going to grab this VLs. And I'm going to put it here. Okay. So we more or less we got the same setup here. But now if I include the button. Uh, if I can. Yep. So button. And let's say back. Or let's say something snazzy. I don't even know what snazzy means. But thank you for reading. Or thank you for reading. I'm done reading. Okay. And on click, I basically I want to revert back to the list. So I want to grab the selected blog and I want to set it to null. Right. So I'm clearing that. So let's refresh this. Let's select. Okay. I'm done reading. Hey, you can put a little bit of padding there if you want. You can style this button. You can make it pretty. I'm going to leave it at that because the primary point of this uh, video is the uh, server side rendering and the uh, are being able to make an architectural decision and knowing what to separate from your project. Okay, but this will be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. And as always, see you in my other videos.